Welcome to the teaching ministry of Reverend JFK Mensa, a seasoned Bible teacher with over 40 years of ministry experience. He is a pastor, a church planter, a missionary, and an international conference speaker. He is passionate about making Christ like disciples worldwide. JFK Mensa is the general overseer of Great Commission Church International. May you be transformed as you listen to the Word of God. So that in our test sessions, Lord, we will operate in these gifts to your glory and our highest good. In Jesus' name, Amen. The first gift of the Spirit we are working with is speaking in tongues. Uh, speaking with other tongues is praying and talking or singing in a language or set of words you didn't learn from anywhere, but it is the Holy Spirit who has put those words on your heart. Let's read it from Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts 2, 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Yes. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit yes. and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You see, they were, this is the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them a chance. So it is clear that a person can be talking in a language he or she does not understand, and when you are speaking, other people do look at you strangely. But it is language which the Spirit of God in you is giving you. And as He is speaking, you are also talking. Amen. Amen. This speaking in tongues has come under fire from the first day of Pentecost till today. On the day of Pentecost, the people listening were saying, ah, these people are drunk with new wine. Then, some people took 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 9 and said, oh, as for tongues and prophecies, they will see. So they have stopped. Anybody who speaks in tongues is speaking in tongues of demons. Then, there is a group too that says, hey, the Bible says you shouldn't speak in tongues in church, so anybody who is speaking in tongues, if nobody is there to interpret, you shouldn't talk. So please, all the people who are speaking in tongues in church, you are going against the Bible. Then, another group too, and I have experienced that one, say, ah, tongues. Is demonic. It's the devil. You know, when we get to the bottom region, we have these people called Yebes. And these, the Yebes, they, they have a language, and you, the ordinary man, you cannot understand. So they get it, and they speak like tongues. And the woman actually came to me and told me that I speak in tongues that is from Satan. I want you to pray for me so that it will stop. So, there is tongues from the devil. And if you don't want it, then don't speak at all. Then there are those two who say that, in fact, even the Bible says if you speak in tongues and you have not loved, 
is a sounding cymbal and a clanging gong. So because of that, you know, all these speaking tongues, you don't have love, it's nothing. And the list goes on. I want to advance 10 of the most important reasons why speaking in tongues is important. Number one, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, that when you are speaking in tongues, you are speaking mysteries to God in the Spirit, and nobody understands you. Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For anyone who speaks in a tongue, anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but you, to God. You are not speaking to human beings, you are speaking to God. 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 Is there anybody who wants to speak to God here? Wow. You see, it's like going to speak to the president. You are speaking to God. Speaking in tongues is speaking to God. Yes. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Holy Spirit. The fact that you don't understand what you are saying, even you yourself don't understand. <laughs> it, it doesn't mean you are, you are speaking nonsense. You are speaking to God. You are speaking mysteries to God. No one understands you, not even Satan and human beings. Hallelujah. So anytime you want to pray, you want to speak to God, you speak in tongues. And if you are speaking in tongues, you are actually mysteries to God in the spirit. And those mysteries can be concerning your future, concerning your marriage, concerning your business, concerning uh, your health. You, you are speaking mysteries in the spirit. You yourself, you don't know what you are saying, but you are talking to God. And because you are talking to God and nobody understands you, 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 you are in a good place. Hallelujah. Number two, when you speak in tongues, you build up yourself spiritually. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, the Bible says, The one who speaks in tongues and unknown tongues, you edify yourself, you build up yourself. But the one who prophesies builds up the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. Yes. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. When you prophesy, you are building other people. When you speak in tongues, you are building yourself. Tongues is a very selfish, profitable gift. Because it helps you, yourself, to grow spiritually. You know, we will come to it. But the first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 says that when you are praying the spirit and you are speaking in tongues, your mind is not fruitful, it's not understanding anything. So it's not your mind which grows. If your spirit prays, so if you are built up, it's your spirit that is built up. Hallelujah. So the second critical issue about speaking tongues is you grow. You grow spiritually. Just speaking tongues for five minutes, ten minutes. Sometimes you just disappear and go to the washroom, speak in tongues and come out and smile. You know, sometimes when you are speaking tongues in the torture, they will say you are mad. But you, you need to know there are times when you know that the only thing I have to do now is speak in tongues. Because you have a challenge which you yourself you don't understand and you need to face. And most human beings, our problem is our spirit is not strong. So Luke 1 80 says that the, John the Baptist, the child, 
He grew, he watched strong his spirit. You see, your spirit must be strong. And your spirit becomes strong as you build yourself up in seeking terms. Number three, when you speak in terms, the third big advantage is the Bible says your spirit is praying. Your spirit is praying. We will read the verse 14 and 15 so that I can make two points there. First Corinthians 14, verse 14 and 15. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. You know, one of the things I had a problem with when I was growing up as a Christian and a pastor is my human spirit. My spirit, where is it? You see? My spirit, where is it? But this verse is saying, when you pray in tongues, your spirit is praying. So your spirit prays. In fact, the verse 15, listen to it. So what shall I do? Yes. I will pray with my spirit. Yes. But I will also pray with my understanding. Correct. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. The spirit prays. Your spirit sings. Luke 1 47 says, Your spirit rejoices. Romans 1 9 says, Your spirit worships. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Your spirit faces. Your spirit knows. So, you have a spirit. And there are times that your spirit is praying. Even though your mind is not fruitful. It's, your mind at that time is not. It doesn't know what is happening. But that time, your spirit is praying. Hallelujah. But the next point, which is the fifth, is that praying in tongues helps you to pray longer and deeper. Many people who don't speak in tongues, you pray 10 minutes, you are tired. You pray 15 minutes, you are sleepy. You pray 20 minutes, you, you lie down. Because the, when you hear that somebody has prayed one hour, yeah, pray every hour, one hour, hey. But he said, what is this then? I'll pray with my spirit, I'll pray with my understanding. I'll stay with my spirit, I'll stay with my understanding. So you see that you start praying 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, and you are not tired because you have a, a, a more powerful help in the prayer. And you are using, you know, two legs to pray. So if you stand on one leg and you are tired, you change it and stand on another leg. You pray with understanding, you pray with the spirit, you, then you stay with your spirit, you stay with understanding, and you jump with your spirit, and you jump with understanding, you rejoice with your spirit, you rejoice with understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. So pray in the spirit gives you a longer span to pray with persistence, to pray longer, to pray with endurance. Then, number six is seeking in tongues is part of our spiritual warfare weapon heaven has given us. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, and verse 18, he lists the whole armor of God. And he says that helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, gather of truth, my feet shall be the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, shield of faith, 
But he ends in the verse 18 saying that praying at all times in the spirit with supplication. You, you can read the verse 12 and then read the verse 18. Ephesians 6 12 and 18. But our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That's it. Our struggle, our wrestling, is not against flesh and blood. It's not like me, I don't want to trouble Satan so that he will trouble me. Me, I leave Satan alone. I don't trouble Satan so he doesn't trouble me. There is nothing like that. Our struggle is not with flesh and blood. Yes? But against the rulers, yeah. against the authorities, yeah. against the powers of this dark world. And against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Verse 18. So we are wrestling with powers, principalities, authorities, well rulers, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places every day. They are contending with you, they are interfering in your money, then they interfere with the business you are doing, your schooling, then they come and put their legs in your children, and then they come and spit on, 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 on your uh, uh, drum, and then they come so big as your health, then they come and woo you on your health, and then they, yes, yeah, every day they come, and then, yes, then you, you see that, they yeah, come again, and uh, this way, and that. You know, sometimes you get that, your water is not running, your electricity is out, you, you go here and you are searching for something small, and then you stretch your hand to take it, then burn. All the pills and things are falling down. It takes you 30 minutes to gather them, and by the time you finish and you are putting it back, your leg is something else, and then, and you are You are wrestling with principalities and powers. So what has God given us in the verse 18? And pray the Spirit on all occasions. Pray the Spirit on all occasions. With all kinds of prayers and requests. All kinds of prayer. Pray the Spirit on all occasions. As part of the fight. Sometimes it is only speaking in tongues that these demons understand. Because they don't understand what you are saying. So it is like an unborn is coming to you. They start speaking to God. He grew to let die, he's just runs. <laughs> because he sees that he doesn't know what you are saying. He doesn't understand. It's a weapon that the devil has given us for spiritual warfare. Because you are not seeing the spirits. You don't know what they are doing next. You don't know where they are moving. So the only way to beat them is to speak in terms. Then you know what I'm speaking in you are speaking mystery to God in the spirit. Yeah, what's happening? Hey, then you see that big rocks are falling on the evil spirit. They say, ah, why are you going on? Then you speak more in tongues. Then you say that somebody's pulling the other. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Now, argument number seven, is it? Yeah. Number seven is that many, many times the Bible says we don't know what to pray for. As we ought. Romans 8, 26 and 27. But you know, there are times when what you are praying for is wrong. Yes. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through well, wordless wrongs. You see, there are two sides to this thing. One is that, what is that to pray for, we don't know. But the second side is that, even the time to pray, we don't know. So, did you see the same man? They were sleeping, and he said, Hey, I could have this time. Watch and pray. Let's inform you that this is the wrongest time to, to do. There you are know, times like that. You see, I was sharing with them that I went to Togo and they put us in a hotel. Uh, this uh, executive council. And I was so tired, I just jumped into bed. Five minutes, I saw myself sleeping with a woman. Then I woke up and said, I'm 
Because it's a hotel, you know, in Lome, where people bring people's wives and commit adultery and sleep with them. So the spirit of adultery and fornication was there. So the last thing I have to do is just jump into them. I should have pleaded the blood of Jesus on their bed, their tears and all. I didn't do that. So there are times when, when you should pray you don't do. What if you pray for you, Lord? That's the time we need speaking in tongues. Because the Spirit at that time is not sleeping. The Holy Spirit knows that this time we need to get up and pray. Then we grow. Mm, mm, ah, mm, 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 mm. The Holy Spirit is groaning. And you don't know what's going on. That's the time when tongues come in. And yes, verse 27. And he who sets our hearts, he who sets it our hearts, knows the mind of the Spirit. Yes. Because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. The Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with God's will. He knows what is happening. So the Holy Spirit gets under the armpit of your spirit and begins to, to, to tell your spirit, this is the time to pray. So Jesus told them in the garden that the spirit is real, but the flesh, that's why you are sleeping in the flesh. I remember reading an account of Paul Gichou. He said during the Korean War, many of these church members, their children were in the army and they were going for the war. And as the pastor, the church members came and said, our son is going to war, but we don't know how to pray for him because we don't know when he is at the battlefront and where. So he went and he said, okay, I know what is happening. Every day, all those of you who can speak in tongues, let's gather and speak in tongues for one hour for your son. So the whole church, every day, they came and they put him in the habaka, kakiyanda, 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 One hour, I don't know where my son is, I don't know whether he's on the battlefront or he is sleeping or I don't know whether who will break. He said, when the whole thing is every soldier from their church came back, not one died. I remember when we were at Hawkeye, for our elder, John Alou, the lead. He said, ah, he got up about 3 o'clock and then he just burst out speaking. He spoke in tongues ah, until 4 a.m. Then he stopped. The next morning, we found out. They were all my church members. But his sister-in-law was in labor. She was in labor from 3 a.m. 4 a.m. she delivered. And the dog said. So, you don't know what to pray for. Right now, if an Amrubah is attacking somebody who is close to you, 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 you are not aware because at the human being you don't know. But the spirit is seeing the thing happening. And he wants to grow through you. And thanks is the only thing that does. Amen. Yeah. Number eight is tongues is the ever present reminder of the indwelling Holy Spirit in our lives. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when you speak in tongues, it is a reminder that the spirit is in you and your body is his temple. Now there are many times that we forget that the Holy Spirit is in us and with us. You know, sometimes you meet a dog, a wild dog. Before you know what? That's what they're running. You see, you forget that you are carrying the Holy Spirit. 
And at that time, it's not you who to run, it's the dog who to run. Yeah. I always give uh, your brother, Christy. I went to Bon Farms. That day, and mommy were then in Bon Farms. So I said I was going for a walk. And Christy said, You go with me. So I said, Let's go. And when we were going, oh, we had not walked for long. Wild dog like a horse. <laughs> Just came out. It was yes. His face was like boy. <laughs> so immediately the dog jumped and grasped at him. Because he went back and jumped back and jumped away. And I said, Dog come back, Pastor. Don't come down. So, that time, you know, I was blowing the Bible verses and tumbling with tongues. I walked on the door. Then I saw him going back. Going back. Going back to this day. Going to that day. Because he said, Don't try to ask him, Don't come down. Don't come down. So, there are times. When the Holy Spirit is in you, and you see a dog and you are telling him. <laughs> you see, you see a snake, it's not killing him. Because the way it is, the kind of mighty Holy Spirit. <laughs> but the cockroach is putting you to flight. The cockroach is making you faint. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. When we speak in tongues, we remind ourselves that. God's Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. Our body is His temple. Because that is the link. Jude verse 20, he says, pray in the Holy Spirit. You see, then you are building yourself up in it. Jude 20, but you dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith, and pray in the Holy Spirit. 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 But number nine, the speaking in tongues is the gateway to the other gifts of the Spirit. What happens is that in Acts 2 4, Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 47. Acts chapter 19, verse 4 and 5. The first evidence that somebody is filled with the Holy Spirit is when he begins to speak in tongues. And so, Peter was saying in the Acts chapter 10 passage that. Look, these people have received the Holy Spirit just as we. Therefore, what prevents us from getting them to be baptized? Now, speaking in tongues opens the door to all the other gifts because. First Corinthians 14 13 says, When you speak in tongues and you are patient, you listen to yourself carefully. You know, Many of us, when we are speaking in we don't even listen. But if you listen to your thoughts carefully for some time, you will begin to understand what you are saying. He says, if you pray with tongues, pray so that you will understand the state. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. Just pray that you will interpret what you are saying. I had an experience, I haven't had many such experiences, but I had an experience when I was on the fast and I was praying for God. And I understand what I was saying. I was just praying. And I said, Oh Lord, I don't understand. I'm praying for God, but I don't understand. Then the Lord opened my eyes. I saw somebody coming to all the football. Uh, stadiums, breaking down the walls, kicking them in death. I said, what am I seeing? 
So now, the way Ghanaians like sports and, and you know, make it replace God in their life. I was sitting in class and in the spirit, God was fighting that spirit in the country. Yes, you know. But that's it. There are certain things you don't even really think about. When you are praying for Ghanaian politics, you feel like a fly getting on an elephant. Because you yourself you know that what I'm saying, are NPP and NDC will not listen to you. But God's spirit takes it. And, and there are other areas too that he says, I will sing with the spirit. It means that there are songs which the Holy Spirit puts on your heart when you are praying. And if the tongue is interpreted, it becomes a prophecy. The tongue's plus interpretation is equal to prophecy. There are many times you are seeking for wisdom. You know, somebody brings you complex something. You yourself will know that this thing. I don't know the answer. Just go. Me, what I do is I go to the washroom. I mean, you, you will laugh at me, but we have many meetings. And when we are in the meeting and the thing stop, I'm supposed to be heading the church. But I don't have the answer. Then I say, I'm coming. I go to the toilet. Just speaking comes small. And then you see that the answer begins to come to your spirit. You see, the reason is that if, if as you do that, you are contacting the spiritual realm. And after the Holy Spirit, He has the answer. We are just ready. He says, You who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. After the Holy Spirit, he doesn't change. For him, he knows the will of God in everything. So he goes back. It's you who don't know. So when you speak in tongues, then you connect. Romans 8, uh, 16. It says, The Spirit witnesses with our saints that we are children of God. And let me close with. The final one, that's number 10, for me, any time you speak in tongues, the Bible says that you are actually opening a new chapter for yourself in the spiritual realm. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 says, If I pray in the tongues of angels and of men, the tongues of angels and tongues of men, it means that, you see, speaking in tongues in itself, it produces a new dimension in your spiritual life. You, you speak in tongues of angels and of men. Can you imagine what is happening? You, you are a farmer from Abuja, and you receive speaking in tongues. And before you know what, you are speaking in tongues of angels and of men. There are presidents, parliamentarians who don't speak in tongues. They cannot even cough. Here you are, a poor farmer. You don't even have money that day. You are speaking in tongues of angels and of men. It, it, it's like coming to have breakfast with President Namaku. You see? Because it introduces you into a spiritual dimension which on your own. You know, first John 1 thing. He says, Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. Tongues pushes you into a dimension of fellowship with the Father and the Son, which on your own, you don't just enter. And that brings me to number 10 now. Of all the gifts exercised in the New Testament, 
the Old Testament has got sound. The Old Testament, Jesus fed 5,000. Elisha fed 100. Uh, Philip, he disappeared and appeared at uh, Azotis. Elijah, Elisha, disappeared and you name them. Healing. But two miracles are special for the New Testament church. One is casting out demons. The second is speaking in tongues. The closest to speaking in tongues in the Old Testament is many, many decades of us in Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5 from verse 11. Well, the whole chapter 5, the hand which wrote for the Shabbat, nobody could read it. Then Daniel came and said, This is the right. Many, many take of us. If it is today, he's speaking in tongues. Many, many take of us. 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 And people say, Oh, stop this. But the interpretation is that you have been weighed in the scale and found wanting. So your kingdom has been divided between the Persians and the Medes. And it's many, many. The many is repeated because anything which is repeated in the spiritual realm, it means the thing is settled. So many, many. Take it. You will have to wait and wait and found one thing. So, the, that's the closest to speaking in tongues in the whole Old Testament. So, if God gives speaking in tongues to the church today, we should guard it jealously. You know, I too, as a pastor, I used to say, yes, be careful. Pray in tongues, yes, but be careful. But two things made me change my mind. First Corinthians 14, 18, Paul was saying, I thank my God that I pray in tongues more than all of you in the Corinthian church. It means speaking in tongues is apostolic practice. He spoke in tongues more than all of the whole church of Corinth. It's apostolic practice. Paul was busy, but he found time. And the second thing is that I differentiate between the prayer language of speaking tongues and the ministry gift of speaking tongues. Your personal prayer language of speaking tongues is your devotional spiritual gift. And the Bible says, you are not speaking to human beings, you are speaking to God. But the prophetic tongues needs an interpreter because God wants to speak to the church. And with that, let two or three prophesy in tongues and let the other interpret. If there is nobody to interpret it, then keep quiet and sit down. I want to launch us into seeking Tongues. And those who already have tongues to begin to pray for singing in tongues. And those who have singing in tongues to begin to pray for interpreting and understanding your tongues. And those who can understand their tongues to begin to pray for prophetic tongues. And those who have prophetic tongues to begin to pray for tongues of angels. And those who have tongues of angels to begin to pray for he says, bless him with the spirit. Bless him with your spirit. And, you know, so that the dimension of the tongues 
you begin to grow. And people get postgraduate terms, doctoral, postdoctoral terms, and, and that when we come to church, if in your private devotion and in church, you can see that you are in touch with the spiritual realm. God bless you in Jesus' name. Follow JFK Men's Ministries on Facebook and YouTube and invite others to listen to his podcast. You can also access some of JFK Men's books and keep up with his ministry at www.jfkmensministries.org. God bless you.